it's hot, like scorching hot. All of this energy from the sun is making me sweat. But I have an idea. Let's use this energy from the sun to make something useful. Save those leftover pizza boxes because we're about to make some solar ovens. Hi everyone, I'm Emily, your friendly neighborhood space gal, here to explain all things space and science. For this week's science experiment, we are going to harness the power of the sun to create some solar ovens. But first, have you ever gotten a sunburn? What color was it and what did it feel like? Well, why are sunburns red and why are they hot and sensitive when you touch them? Well, our sun sends out a bunch of ultraviolet light or UV light. And some of that UV light can be damaging to our skin. Too much UV light can actually cause DNA damage in our skin cells and create something called a radiation burn. This is why it is so important to wear sunscreen when we're outside to protect our skin from radiation burns. But if you do get a radiation burn or a sunburn, your body works really hard to fix it. It works to bring immune cells to the damaged area, but this means increased blood flow, dilated blood vessels, and all of that makes the area look a little red and a little swollen and feel really tender. The sun is incredibly powerful and we don't want to underestimate it. In fact, today we are going to use the energy from those UV rays for good and make some food outside. To make your solar oven, you're going to need a pizza box, some black paper and some scissors, some aluminum foil, some tape, a glass bowl, and of course you'll need something to cook. Today we are going to make cheesy nachos, you need tortillas and shredded cheese, and s'mores, so you'll need graham crackers, chocolate, and marshmallows. Parents and guardians, let's make sure we are helping with this because we don't want anybody to get cut on the tin foil box and the solar oven can actually get surprisingly hot. Our solar ovens are really light converter machines. We are going to be doing three things that will convert the highly energetic shorter wavelength light from the sun into longer wavelength light that will heat our food. The first way we are going to do that is by lining our pizza box with black paper. My black paper surprisingly fits my pizza box perfectly, so I don't need my scissors, but I am gonna tape it down. Just like so. Why are we doing this? Well, we want our solar oven to be as hot as possible, hotter than it is outside. A lighter color paper would actually do a good job of reflecting light and make our solar oven cooler but that's not what we want. A darker color like this will be more efficient at absorbing light and will make our solar oven hotter. The second thing we're going to do is add aluminum foil to the top inside part of our pizza box. Why are we doing this? Well, look how shiny tin foil is. This acts like a mirror to direct even more light energy onto our food. So you just wanna tape it to the inside top part of your box right here. Use tape to secure it down. Oh my goodness, I am sweating. That should be good. And then eventually you're going to wanna to point this towards the sun. Now you wanna prop the top part of your pizza box up. And the angle that you prop it up at is really gonna depend on where the sun is in the sky. If it's lower in the sky, you can make your angle a little bit lower, but you can see the sun is kind of directly overhead. So right now I want my angle to be kind of large so that I'm letting in as much light as possible and I'm not casting a shadow on my food. I'm just gonna use tape to prop mine up. Da -da -da -da. Just like that. The third and final way we are going to make our solar oven hot, hot, hot and convert short wavelength light into longer wavelength light is by trapping heat with a glass bowl. So we are just going to place this over our food once we have that set up. And this is going to trap heat due to the greenhouse effect. You see, this glass allows shorter wavelength light to pass through it but that shorter wavelength light is then absorbed by the stuff inside, like our black paper, and then re-emitted as longer wavelength light, like infrared light or heat. And here's the trick, that longer wavelength light cannot pass through the glass. And so all of that heat energy, all of that infrared light is trapped inside of our glass bowl, doomed to heat up our food. First, we're gonna try some cheesy nachos. And I have a control here, so we can see which one melts faster. Okay, so we're gonna do some tortilla chips. Add some cheese. Now add our bowl. 
Make sure it's pointed towards the sun. And now we wait. My phone is literally overheating. That is how hot it is outside. So we're gonna have to go back out and show you the nachos in short increments. All right, this is five minutes five minutes after being in the sun. You can see that the cheese is sweating a little bit. You can get up close here, give it a good look. Some of the cheese is sweating, but not all. Here it looks like all of the cheese looks uh, a little wet. We can check a little bit of the temperature here. 106, oh yeah, it's going down. So this is like 107, 124. This is outside of the glass right there. So that's not even inside the glass, which has got to be a, a, a bit hotter. Woo wee. Oh my gosh, wait, no, I think they're done. This is, it's been seven minutes and you can kind of see on the side that they're already quite cheesy. We'll leave, in, we'll leave them in there for 10 minutes just to get them really cheesy and then we can do a taste test. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and we are going to do a taste test. We can look at our control and see that the cheese is sweating, like it looks wet, but it's not completely melted. It does not look like cheesy nachos. That looks like nachos with shredded cheese. Oh yeah. That is some melted cheese. That is some melted cheese. I do not see shredded cheese there, I see melted cheese. That is the power of our solar oven in action. Oh yeah, that is quite cheesy. Oh my gosh. We did good, guys. Very good, very good. My only regret is that I should have added more cheese. Control, solar oven, boo. Yay. Now we are going to make s'mores. You can use a Hershey bar of chocolate, but I only had chocolate chips. So we are going to use chocolate chips. Like last time we have our control and I'll put our glass on our solar oven. I predict this one is going to take like three minutes or less. The chocolate is already melting. Okay, it's been five minutes. It's kind of hard to say which one looks more melty, but according to our thermometer, it's much hotter over here. All right, let's do the taste test. Oh, that looks very melty. The marshmallow is warm, but I, the marshmallows are not really gonna melt. Here we go. Let's look at that melt. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. That's just pure melted chocolate right there but we have to truly taste it to find out, right? Look at that. Oh yeah. That tastes like a s'more. Mmm, giant. Mmm. Mm. Oh yeah. All right, let's see how melty this is. This is the control. Okay, it's definitely melty but I feel like it's not as melty. Yeah, that one tastes good too. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for many more science videos. And as always, stay curious and keep exploring. I'll see you next time.